Hello again, this is Janet from Paper and Spark, and in this final video for the Inventory for Resellers spreadsheet, I'm showing you how to roll over last year's spreadsheet to a new year, and I'm calling this the rollover process or the rollover steps. So the last video was all about closing out for the end of the year. After you have done that, you can now roll over for the beginning of a new year. So the, so the first thing you want to do is copy last year's final file and make a new version of that same file for going forward into the new year. So I don't want you to open a totally new blank original file. I want you to start with last year's as a basis, but I don't want you to accidentally work over last year's file. So that's why I suggest you copying a file. You can literally just copy the file, pretend that's last year's, you know, final, and then Paste a new one and then just call it, you know, this year's version. Okay. So working with that, open that. We have copy and pasted a new file. We're going to start clean and fresh for the new year. And this is how we're going to do it. The first thing you can do is go through all your tabs and delete anything that has zero ending remaining units. These guys are gone. They are not in my beginning inventory for this year because I sold all of them last year. So let's clean up this spreadsheet and get rid of anybody that's got zero ending remaining units. To do that, you can click on the number of the row of that zero remaining unit item. Click it to select the whole thing, the whole row. And then once the entire row is highlighted, you can just right click and do delete. Okay, so you will perform that process for everybody that's got zero items remaining on all your tabs. That's step one. All right, now our next few steps are going to involve taking these ending units remaining and making them our beginning year units for our items that are now having been bought in a previous year. So we're in 2017 now, so I need to start 2017 with some beginning year units for all these guys that I bought last year. And this is gonna involve a few things to do that. First, we want to simply select all the numbers in the cost per unit column for these prior year items. So I'm just clicking and then dragging to select that cost per unit for those items. And I'm going to copy and paste it as values, all right? If you don't understand what this is doing, it doesn't matter, just make sure that you do it. We're basically telling the spreadsheet, don't calculate these via a formula anymore, just know these numbers. We're gonna hard key in $6.66, $10, etc. as values instead of being based on a formula. So to do that, all you have to do is copy, right click and then copy, or edit and then copy. And then I want you to right click, don't, don't click anywhere else. This is copied, we're gonna paste it right back where it is. So you just right click again and do paste special, or you can do edit, paste special, and I want you to select values from this menu, okay? We're pasting as values. So now, these, these numbers here, they are values, okay? It is actually $18.75. It is not sell whatever divided by sell whatever anymore. So we're copying and pasting all of these tabs as values. Copy, paste, values, okay? and so on and so on for every tab of inventory that you have. Okay, our next step is we are going to copy our ending units remaining, just the cells that have actual numbers in them. Right click, copy, or edit, copy. And then we want to copy those into 
the beginning your units. So click the first beginning your unit cell or you can highlight all of them. Just make sure that you start even with what you're copying. And then you're going to paste special again and we're going to paste as values. All right. So those are based on a formula, so that's why we have to paste as values because we don't want to paste the formula, we want to paste the numbers themselves. This action is basically you telling the spreadsheet that these are the items that you started the year with or what inventory rolled over from last year to this year. All right, for the next step, we're going to delete what is entered in the quantity purchased this year so far because we purchased these guys last year. We didn't purchase them this year. So I'm going to highlight them and clear contents. That works better in Excel on a Mac for some reason. I think in regular Excel or on Google Sheets, you might be able to just hit the backspace button, but uh, clear contents does the trick too. Okay, so you can verify that you performed that step correctly by checking out your purchases this year. It should be blank now. After you delete any items from this quantity purchase this year column, your purchases for the year should be blank because we haven't entered any current year purchases yet. Next, we're going to do the same thing for your unit sold column. We have not sold anything yet this year, so let's clear this column out. Again, right click clear contents. All right. Same thing for personal use units this year. Right click clear contents. Get rid of everything there. Throughout this whole process we're making sure to leave these three columns alone. All right. These guys have got formulas in them and we don't want to accidentally mess up any of these formulas. Now on that note real quick you might remember at the end of last year when you did your ending inventory count, you may have overridden a number that's that's here in this ending units remaining. You might have, you know, this was seven and we said no, we actually have six. So we actually typed six in here. So I messed up this formula. It used to be a formula that was based on your quantity purchase and you're beginning your units and your units sold. But now I just have six as a value in here. So if you think that you've done that anywhere, you want to put the formula back. The easiest way to do that is just copy it from a cell that still has it. You can just copy it, right click copy, and then paste it. And it's going to paste the formula there and it'll adjust it for the new row. So I now have a formula in this cell, so I'm good to go. You may have not overridden anything, so you might not need to worry about that, but just in case you did, that's, what, that's how you can fix it. Okay, now after clearing out your quantity purchased and your unit sold and your personal use this year and just having a blank slate, you can verify that you did this part right by checking out your cost of ending inventory. This should still match last year's cost of ending inventory for the same tab. So I've got 779.83 here. I should be able to check this on last year's final version and it's the same. And that makes sense and that proves that we're on the right track because we're, our beginning year inventory for this year should always match last year's ending inventory. And we haven't changed anything, we haven't bought anything or sold anything yet, so the two numbers should still be the same until we start selling things or entering new purchases. So now we've got to do that process for every tab on the spreadsheet. So we've already copied and pasted the per unit cost as a value. The next step is to take your ending units remaining, copy it, paste it as a value, and you're beginning your units. Clear out any quantity purchased this year, clear out any units sold this year, clear out any personal use units this year, and make sure that this makes sense. $80, let's tie it over to $80, great, we're good to go there. So you will literally do this process for every tab and when you're done with that, the only thing left to do is to change this 
to the new year. So you can change the, the year itself and you can change that anytime you see the year. You can make your beginning year inventory match last year's ending inventory. So that's $943.83. Remember, that's not linked to anything. That's just for you to update. And so far, we have no purchases, no personal use, nothing sold. So we are good to go using this spreadsheet for the year going forward now. So when you're done with this, you can celebrate by pouring yourself a glass of wine or eating a bunch of chocolate. This rollover process is probably the most difficult part of um handling the spreadsheet other than having to do the end of year count for tax time. But um, now you're good to go for going forward and you can begin to enter your current year purchases into the spreadsheet. Okay, that wraps up how to use the inventory for resellers spreadsheet. I hope that you find this helpful with your business. And um, remember, if you're looking for a spreadsheet or a system to use for totaling your sales, importing in sales and fees from online sources like Etsy or PayPal or Amazon, um, or having a place to enter your non-inventory business expenses, check out the Paper and Spark seller spreadsheets. We've got tons to choose from. They import in from all different sources, and they are a good solution for your monthly bookkeeping tasks outside of the realm of inventory. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me at hello at paperandspark.com. And don't forget to check out the FAQ and resources page on my site, which has plenty of uh, helpful info and answers to my most frequently asked questions about this tool. Thanks.